Good morning, church. It's Tuesday morning. Take your Bibles, and we're going to complete the study out of chapter number 20 of the book of Acts. As we're looking at the, the makeup of a church, uh, the ecclesiastical structure that God has put into his churches, obviously Christ is the head. But I want you to notice in our text today, as Paul is having a pastor's conference, as he's talking to the elders from Ephesus, from Ephesus, as he is describing to them his ministry, that he has not failed to teach them everything that God has intended for him, uh, for them to understand. And so in verse number 28, let's pick it up there. Well, verse 27, he says, for I've not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. So that's what Paul did for them. I trained you in every possible way. I shared with you everything you needed to know that God has given to me. My hands are clean. Verse 28, therefore, because you have been trained for this ministry, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock, and also from among yourselves, men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore, watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn you, everyone, night and day, with tears. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I have coveted no one's silver or gold or peril. Yes, you yourselves know that these hands have provided for my necessities and for those who were with me. I've shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak. And remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, that it is more blessed to give than to receive. And the Bible says they then knelt down and prayed, and Paul prayed over them and uh, possibly laid hands on them, but they prayed and they wept together because this was a time of... of, of uh, sincerity. It was, it was a very solemn occasion, a very good occasion as they, they're saying their goodbyes to one another. Now, look back again at verse number 28. How is a church to be governed? Well, it's God's church. He governs it. Uh, well, what is a guidebook? The Bible. He said, I'm not, I've not uh, failed to share with you the whole counsel of God. And he talks that I've taught you the whole, the whole Word of God, that uh, you need to stay with the Word of God. He, he encourages them to continue with the things that I have told you, that you might be built up, uh, that you may stay with the Word, he says in, in verse 32, the Word of His grace and, and the things that He has taught us. He warns them, don't be coveting men's gold or clothes or silver, don't... Don't be coveting those things, but we are to work as shepherds, taking care of God's flock. And he says, I without a doubt know this. Without a doubt, when I leave, it always happens, Paul would say, every time I leave, there's this group that comes in from behind me, and they're like savage wolves who want to tear apart the church, who want to destroy the disciples, and they're going to come in and teach doctrines that are not right, perverse things, he says, they're going to try to draw you away, uh, the disciples, to follow after them. He said, even, by the way, some of them are in your churches already. Not just people from outside the church, but there's people there in Ephesus, and Paul probably could call names. They're going to rise up just as soon as I have no influence, and they're going to try to, to draw away disciples. So you got to preach the word. you, you got to lead and shepherd this church. But I want to emphasize again, he says, the Holy Spirit made you an overseer, not the church. It's God who calls out pastors. It's God who anoints pastors and prepares pastors. Yes, the church confirms that. When, when a church calls a pastor, a church is saying, basically, we believe this is a God-called man. But not only is he a God-called man, we believe that God is calling to this church to, to be the shepherd, the leader, the overseer, uh, the elder of this church. And then when you call that pastor, you pray for him because he's going to be attacked. 
You get alongside him, become a friend to the pastor. You, you help him in every possible way. Deacons come in and help with the ministry and other uh, leaders in the church who are mature come alongside him and hold him up and hold him accountable. But the, the church is to be led by the pastors. And uh, we got into a nonsense about, well, not quite a hundred years ago, but particularly in Southern Baptist churches that we th somehow thought the church was to be congregational in its approach to leadership. That is, the congregation leads, so the congregation decides what to do. Now, pastor, you get out there in front and lead us. And they began to decide everything by a majority vote, that it's a, we brought democracy into the church. Listen, the church is not a democracy. It's a theocracy. God leads. But God leads through God-called ministers. And sometimes churches get themselves in trouble because they call a minister who is not ordained of God, who is not assigned by God to that church, but the people want to hear the things this guy has to say. They like his approach. Maybe it's just his appearance because he's flashy. He tells wonderful stories and he, he, he makes you laugh. And they bring in pastors who should not be there. But if a church properly follows God's leadership in calling a pastor, then they can submit themselves into that pastor. And it makes for a beautiful marriage. I know of churches who had pastors for 50 years. This church, I've been here 27. We got churches in our association uh, where pastors have been there 35 years, 30 years, uh, because there's a wonderful thing when, when the people accept the leader as, as the leader and the, the shepherds shepherd the flock with humility and tears and servants over the people, shepherding and, and ministering and feeding the flock, then that's just a wonderful thing. God is glorified and God is honored. That's what a church needs to be. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you again for the healthiness of this church, that, Father, we can be a part of a church that follows the example of Scripture, allowing its leaders to lead, being willing to submit and to follow. And at the same time, Father, all of us serving one another. In the name of our Lord Jesus, amen.